In the last video, you learned about the sliding windows object detection algorithm using a ConfNet, but we saw that it was too slow. In this video, you learn how to implement that algorithm convolutionally. Let's see what this means. To build up toward the convolutional implementation of sliding windows, let's first see how you can turn fully connected layers in your neural network into convolutional layers. We'll do that first on this slide, and then the next slide, we'll use the ideas from this slide to show you the convolutional implementation. So let's say that your object detection algorithm inputs um, 14 by 14 by 3 images. This is quite small, but just for illustrative purposes. And let's say it then uses um, 5 by 5 filters, and let's say it uses 16 of them to map it from 14 by 14 by 3 to 10 by 10 by 16 and then does a 2 by 2 max pooling to reduce it to 5 by 5 by 16, then um, has a fully connected layer to connect to 400 units, then another fully connected layer, and then finally outputs a Y using a softmax unit. In order to make the change we'll need to in a second, I'm going to change this picture a little bit, and instead I'm going to view Y as um, four numbers corresponding to the class probabilities of the four classes that the softmax units is classifying amongst. Um, and the, the four classes could be pedestrian, car, motorcycle, and background, or something else. Now, what I'd like to do is show how these layers can be turned into convolutional layers. So the confnet, we're going to draw same as before for the first few layers. And now, one way of implementing this next layer, this fully connected layer, is to implement this as a 5x5 five five filter, and let's use 400 5x5 five five filters. So if you take a 5x5x16 five 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 image and convolve it with a 5x5 five five filter, remember, a 5x5 five five filter is implemented as 5x5x16, five 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 by because our convention is that the filter looks across all 16 channels. So this 16 and this 16 must match. And so the output will be one by one. And if you have 400 of these 5 by 5 by 16 filters, then the output dimension is going to be one by one by 400. And so rather than viewing these 400 as um, just a set of nodes, we're going to view this as a one by one by 400 volume. And mathematically, this is the same as a fully connected layer, because each of these 400 nodes has a filter of dimension 5 by 5 by 16, and so each of those 400 values is some you know, arbitrary linear function of these 5 by 5 by 16 um, activations from the previous layer. Next, to implement the next convolutional layer, we're going to implement a one by one convolution and if you have 400 one by one filters, then with 400 filters, the next layer will again be one by one by 400. So that gives you this next fully connected layer. And then finally, we're going to have um, another one by one filter followed by a softmax activation so as to give a one by one by four volume uh, to take the place of these four numbers that the network was outputting. So this shows how you can take these fully connected layers and implement them using convolutional layers so that these uh, sets of units instead are now implemented as 1 by 1 by 400 and 1 by 1 by 4 volumes. Armed with this conversion, let's see how you can have a convolutional implementation of sliding windows object detection. And the presentation on this slide is based on the Overfeed paper referenced at the bottom by Pierre Sermi, David Eigen, Xiang Zhang, Michael Matthew, Rob Fergus, and Yang Kun. Let's say that your sliding windows confnet inputs 14 by 14 by 3 images. And um, again, I'm just using small numbers, like the 14 by 14 image in this slide, uh, mainly to make the numbers and illustrations simpler. So as before, you have a neural network as follows that eventually outputs a 1 by 1 by 4 volume, uh, which is the output of your softmax unit. And again, to simplify the drawing here, 14 by 14 by 3 is technically a volume, 5 by 5 or 
10 by 10 by 16 and second clear volume. But to simplify the drawing for this slide, I'm just going to draw the front face of these volumes. So instead of drawing, you know, one by one by 400 volume, I'm just going to draw the one by one parts of all of these, right? So just uh, drop the 3D component of these drawings just for this slide. So let's say that your ConfNet inputs 14 by 14 images or 14 by 14 by 3 images and your test set image is 16 by 16 by 3. So I've now added that yellow stripe to the border of this image. So in the original sliding windows algorithm, you might want to uh, input the blue region into your ConfNet and run that once to generate a classification of 0, 1 and then slide it down a bit, let's say you use a stride of 2 pixels and um, and then you might slide uh, oh, and then you might slide that to the right by two pixels to input this green rectangle into the confnet and rerun the whole confnet and get another label zero one and then you might input this orange region into the confnet and run it one more time to get another label and then do it a fourth and final time with this your know, lower right. Um, now, purple square. And so to run sliding windows on this 16 by 16 by 3 image, it's a pretty small image. You run this confnet from above four times in order to get four labels. But it turns out a lot of this computation done by these four confnets is highly duplicated. So what the convolutional implementation of sliding windows does is it allows these four um, forward passes of the confnet to share a lot of computation. Specifically, here's what you can do. You can take the confnet and just run it, same parameters, the same 5x5 five by, five by filters, uh, all 16 5x5 five by five filters, and run it. And now you can have a 12x12x16 12 by 12 by output volume, and then do the max pool, same as before. Now you have a 6x6x16, six by six by run through your same 400 5x5 five by five filters to get now your 2x2x40 two by two by volume. So now instead of a one by one, so now instead of a one by one by 400 volume, you have instead a two by two by 400 volume. Uh, run it through your one by one filter, gives you another two by two by 400 instead of one by one by 400. Do that one more time, and now you're left with a two by two by four output volume instead of one by one by four. And it turns out that this blue 1 by 1 by 4 subset gives you the result of running in the upper left hand corner 14 by 14 image. This upper right 1 by 1 by 4 volume gives you the upper right result. Um, the lower left gives you the results of implementing the confnet on the lower left 14 by 14 region. And the lower right 1 by 1 by 4 volume gives you the same results as running the uh, confnet on the lower right 14 by 14 region. And if you step through all the steps of the calculation, let's look at the green example. If you had cropped out just this region and passed it through the confnet, through the confnet on top, then the first layer's activations would have been exactly this region. The next layer's activation after max pooling would have been exactly this region. And then um, the next layer, the next layer would have been as follows. So what this process does, what this convolutional implementation does, is instead of forcing you to run forward propagation on four subsets of the input image independently, instead it combines all four into one forward prop computation and shares a lot of the computation in the regions of the image that are common to all four of the um, 14 by 14 patches we saw here. Now let's just go through a bigger example. Let's say you now want to run sliding windows on a 28 by 28 by 3 image. It turns out if you run forward prop the same way, then you end up with an 8 by 8 by 4 output. And this corresponds to running sliding windows with that 14 by 14 region. Um, and that corresponds to running sliding windows first on that region that's giving you the output corresponding to the upper left hand corner then using a stride of two to shift one window over one window over one window over and so on and there are eight positions so that gives you this first row and then as you you know go down the image as well that gives you all of these eight by eight by four um, outputs and be and it's because of the max pooling of two that uh, this corresponds to running 
your neural network with a stride of two on the original image. So just to recap, to implement sliding windows previously, what you do is you crop out a region, let's say this is um, 14 by 14, and run that to your confnet, then do that for the next region over, then do that for the next 14 by 14 region, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, and so on, until hopefully that one recognizes the car. But now, instead of doing it sequentially, with this convolutional implementation that you saw on the previous slide, you can implement the entire image, all maybe 28 by 28, and convolutionally make all the predictions at the same time uh, by one thought pass through this big confident and hopefully have it recognize the position of the car. So that's how you implement sliding windows convolutionally, and it makes the whole thing much more efficient. Now, this algorithm still has one weakness, which is the position of the bounding boxes is not going to be too accurate. In the next video, let's see how you can fix that problem.